हाउ आर यू वेलकम टू अर न्यू वीडियो माई नेम इज स्मृति एंड यू आर वॉचिंग अ वीडियो इन विच आई वोट बी टॉकिंग टू यू अबाउट सम ऑफ द बेस्ट बुक्स दर आई रेड सो फार दिस इयर इंक्लूडिंग अ लॉर्ड ऑफ स्टैट सो इफ यू आर अ पर्सन हु लाइक्स स्टैट्स एज वेल एज नोइंग अबाउट सम अमेजिंग बुक्स दैन आर वेलकम Essentially, in this video, what I'm going to be doing is talking to you about some of the stats of the Q1, which is January, February, and March of 2022, as well as I'm um, going through some of my goals that I set for myself in the beginning of the year and seeing whether I have achieved them or not. Because this is supposed to be my accountability video, <laughs> where you also like hold me accountable for all of the goals and resolutions that I set for myself. Because like. I don't want to be that sort of person who like sets goals in the beginning of the year and then looks at them at the end of the year and goes like, "Oh, yeah, remember that? You wanted to do that? No, I want to do it every quarter and this is this is it." So like, yeah, that's uh, what I'm going to be doing in this one as well as talking to you about some of my favorite books that I read this year so far in the Q1 quarter 1 quarter <laughs> oh god but um before i begin with all of the stats and all of that stuff i do have to say that um the quality of the audio of this video may not be excellent um because india is going through a heat wave right now it is really really freaking hot right now um and i have the ac as well as the fan slightly on um if i didn't have any of those two on i would honestly melt and be like a puddle so um no thank you so just deal with it uh, is all i'm going to say and uh, yeah let's just get into the stats and the most important stat uh, obviously is uh, how many books did you read um and i read 42 books in these 3 months and 42 is an amazing number um because like i don't know if you read hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy you would know the significance if you haven't please read the book it's amazing just just read it it's awesome um but yeah 42 um books that i read the number of pages that i read is 10992 which like i'm just going to round up to 11000 i mean what is 10992 it's fine <laughs> moving on uh the average pages that i read per day was 123.5 which is pretty damn good um and the average book length is 261 i did stick to a lot of books within the 150 to 300 page um count so the most being 150 to 200 but uh, yeah that's basically what it was a lot of novellas a lot of really great short novels which is great and i love that for me i also ended up buying a few books <laughs> this quarter um and a few is hold pause for a bit pause for a bit and guess what do you think that number is um Unpause now. Okay, cool. Um, the number is fifty-eight. Out of which eleven were arcs that were sent to me. That is like publishers sent me this book. Um, two were gifts that people gave me, and forty-five I bought on my own volition. So, uh, not that great. But we will. We. I mean, it's fine. It, it's okay. I'm. I'm a hoarder. What are you gonna do about it? Uh, however, of all of these books that I actually did buy, fifty-six percent of them I bought from indie bookstores. um and the rest is 44% i bought from amazon uh keep in mind that a lot of them are also ebooks which you do have to buy from amazon so <laughs> what are you going to do about it next is in terms of format read and as you can see in this chart here i love my kindle i love my kindle aha uh -huh. i love my kindle because yes i read uh 20 books um through my kindle um i also read five books um which were ebook plus audio books so 25 technically ebooks um next the biggest you can see over here is paperbacks and then like hardbacks were hardly any but yeah who cares about hardbacks no i'm kidding i love hardbacks i just don't have money to buy them moving on we are going to talk about the gender split of the books that i read so no surprise here i read 78.6% female and 21.4% male so primarily i read a lot of female authors which is not a surprise at all um in terms of the genres i read 14 genres this um in this quarter um with the most being a uh, contemporary which again is not a surprise 21.4% um was contemporary what is a surprise 
which is not really a surprise is um the next few genres which is fantasy because i did end up reading um seven books from fantasy because i read seven novellas um in the fantasy genre and you can check that out i read the uh what's it called so wayward children series yes the wayward children series um and the next genre which i read the most of is romance apparently um but that's also because i did a video about reading popular romance books um and you can check out that video as well so so yeah, um, six from romance and seven from um, fantasy, which like normally I don't think really happens as much. Uh, but the next was five from historical fiction. And yeah, I think those are the genres that you really should know about. But the rest you can see in this pie chart here. Now, the cool part about the squatter is that I um, read 12 translations from all over the world, which is awesome, I think. Um, one was Indian, which is not awesome because I want to read more Indian translated books. But, well, um, apparently I read 12 from all over the world and I read from 16 countries, which is honestly a little cuckoo. Um, and I love that for myself. Um, I read... Um, 17 books from the US which is not great because I wanted to reduce that number in terms of the number of books that um, I read from the US but that's fine. Um, five from the UK, um, three from Japan and two each from South Korea, Mexico and India. So um, I just thought that that is like fascinating as well. Don't worry this is the last stat that I will be sharing with you and that is of my ratings. So Primarily, I've had a lot of good reads, which is primarily a lot of them have been my four star books or my 4.5 star books, which is excellent. Um, four stars are 11 four stars and eight 4.5 stars. I've had only five five stars, which I still think were really, really, really excellent books. Um, and I really enjoyed them. So um, overall, my average rating was 3.72, which I don't think is bad. However, I do want to like bring it up. So I'm hoping in the next quarter that that like average rating kind of goes up because I did have some absolutely abysmal readings as well, uh, like my one star and two star that I have. So um, yeah, just don't want that. But now let's move on into the goals check-in, which I will do super quickly. So the first one is read more of what you want to read at the time that you want to read it, which is basically mood read, <laughs> just like short version of that is mood read yeah and did i do that i don't think i did there were a few books that i really wanted to read um and still do want to read um which i didn't pick up at that time so like yeah like probably not but that's okay i i will like do it i will force myself to do that now um next is read books that you want to and i did do this um i actually have a chart here <laughs> i think there were only six books that i were unhappy about reading but that's okay um <laughs> read via audiobooks only not using an ebook or a paperback along it this was a thing that i was really looking forward to doing because i feel like i hadn't um done it before and good i have done that i read one book which was magma um by ebook via scribd um also if you want a scribd membership uh two months free then like check out the description for like uh two months free haha <laughs> i get two months also if you only oh, get one month i get one month if you sign up um the next one is read less caucasians uh less than 45 percent and 50 percent of my books were by caucasians which is uh not good but not bad either i said less than 45 and i i made it to 50 i think i did pretty well um overall but it's okay um i will just keep that in mind now um buy less books so just stick to your budget i did actually stick to my budget even though i did buy like getting 58 books um this month i spent half of what i spent in q1 last year um and bought half of the amount of books that i bought in last year um and i think i've been pretty good about it as well um and i've pretty much stuck to my budget um which is which is excellent um the next one is read more from your shelves um not really i read 12 books that were from my shelves um like which are basically books that were already in my house before this year started um so yeah i read 12 which is okay but like i can do better so i'm gonna i'm gonna um aim for more um read more classics uh this is because in 2020 i read a lot of classics and i really enjoyed them 
um and this year as well i read um three classics which is not great i would ideally like to do more um so if you have any like recommendations for classics please do let me know um then the next one is read books about 10 topics that you want to learn about which is basically like my thing of saying read more non fiction um and i did read four non fictions but however i got to know more about the partition um and as well as like love um which were two topics that i'm going to hold on to i also did learn about the japanese internment as well as john lewis um who is a really famous um senator and who worked for the civil rights movement um but i'm going to count more of like topics that i actually wanted to know about um is partition and and love <laughs> the next one is uh read at least 20 indian translation books um i read one in this quarter which i don't think is great um ideally i should be reading more but um it's okay it's fine um this is the time for lit with indian lit so that is what i'm going to be doing um read more from most states in india um uh, more than 8 so far i've read from 2 which is from up and kerala um which is okay but like i can i can do better um and in terms of, i said read from 40 countries uh, i've read from 16 so far so i think i'm killing it in terms of that goal um however the next two goals i am not doing good at at all and those were to read at least 10 um trans or non binary authors i read zero um so far this year which is really really freaking terrible um and in fact right now i am trying to like remedy that um uh, and then the next one is to read one book every quarter that intimidates you um i was going to be reading a book but then i went through a major reading slump so that that's that didn't happen so yeah that didn't happen guys what what am i going to do out of the 13 goals i think i was successful with 6 however i do have to do way better so make sure that you keep me accountable to all of this shit um with all of your comments down in the comment section in all of my videos just keep reminding me um cuz i need to yeah guys i need to so And now we move on to the recommendations aspect of this video which I think all of you were waiting for. Thank you for staying with me through the stats aspect of it. Um but before I move on to the best of the best, I do have to also shout out two books that I absolutely loved. Um I think that they are amazing. They did not get five stars uh, from me. They got 4.5 stars, but I feel like I need to shout them out. Um the first one being Kulti or Kulti by Mariana Zapata. I thought that this was an amazing enemies to lovers romance um that I read. I really liked the uh banter and the way that we saw that they were enemies that moved into friends and then like ultimately a relationship. Um it was long. It was the longest book that I read, but I just really liked that progression. Um and I just really liked the dynamics between these two people so there's that the other book that i absolutely loved and would highly recommend it's a non fiction book but like oh my god so amazing is indian summer um i absolutely love this one this one basically talks about the um key players um in the indian partition which is in 1947 india and pakistan were like broken up into two separate countries and the UK or Great Britain left us as like people who had colonized us um for over 300 years uh, but we basically followed the key players which are the mount batens um so edwina mount bat mount batten as well as uh, louis Ma mount batten uh, jawahar lal nehru uh, gandhi and uh, mohammad ali jinnah these are the five people but we also follow a bunch of others um and we try to see like what exactly was happening in the summer of 1947 right before august 15th or 14th um which is when um the country's won their independence um and it is super fascinating it is written in the most like fun way there is a lot of like salaciousness as well where like there's gossip about like a uh, sort of love thing that happened between edwina and nehru um and a bunch of other things but i just thought that like it was really really well written um and i love that this was a non fiction that was very character based if that makes sense to you so yeah those were the two books that i really wanted to shout out before i get into the books that i absolutely loved um and this may or may not be a little ranked so let me just get into the fifth book uh like out of like 
yeah fifth book so the fifth book is in an absent dream by uh shauna mcguire this was part of the um wayward children series that i read um and this one was about this one person named lundy which is a really like weird name to me as an indian um lundy means the male genitalia <laughs> or lund means the main genitalia in um hindi so i just think that that is really funny that her name is lundy but anyway lundy uh, we follow her and like her adventures of going to another world um because that's basically what the wayward children is they find a door and they enter a different sort of world and then like they come back or they don't and they just talk about their adventures and what exactly happened during that time um i thought that this was really really fascinating i really liked lundy's journey not only like the journey that she had while she was in that other like place but also um because it focused on like the aftermath of these adventures and not really of the adventure itself um it also spoke about like people and like i really liked the relationship that she had with like the people in this land as well as like just generally like in um regular land like with her father and all of that sort of stuff um i just really liked the way that it was done and i liked what it had to say so this was my favorite book um in the wayward children series as well as just overall i just thought it was really really well done i liked the theme and things that were spoken about um but yeah that's that's that um you do i think have to read the rest of the books to kind of understand what was going on in this book so it's not really a book that you can just pick up and read but i would i would suggest that you read it because it's all like under 150 pages so the next one that i really loved is assembly by natasha brown now this was the shortest book that i read um last month and i absolutely fell in love with it i was just shocked as to like how simply amazing it was and how she could sort of like talk about so many different things in like 104 pages um essentially we are following this girlfriend who goes to her boyfriend's like summer house um for this party um and she's meeting like the guy's parents for the first time essentially she is black he is like sort of aristocratic sort of like old money sort of english um and just the sort of dynamics that are there the sort of things that she talks about she's also going through something personally i don't really want to talk about this book too much because like it's 104 pages but like i just like i was in awe of like the sort of writing and like all of the beautiful amazing things that she could fit into this um absolutely stunning stellar um read and like I can't wait for uh, more books from Natasha Brown because she's amazing. What a absolutely amazing writer. Um the next book that I want to talk to you about is this one which is Shoko Smile uh by Choi Eun-young. Um and this I read as an e-book and then had to buy the hardcover even though it is for 1000 rupees which is very very expensive in India. Um I just had to have it because I absolutely love this book um this book is a collection of short stories that is translated from um korean um and it is talks about like people um not necessarily in south korea also could be elsewhere um like in germany etc but talks about um uh, them and like a lot of like social commentary about things that are happening like so this political stuff as well as like just generally um talking about the war or like things that have happened in south korea and stuff like that um and i just thought that this was an absolutely stellar read if you like jhumpa lehri then this reminded me of like her in terms of being able to put in so much of like feelings and emotions and have you feel so much for these sort of people um in a very short like span of pages um i just thought that it was a uh, absolutely amazing read and again cannot wait to read more of this author um more of her works need to be translated she needs to write more i just i just really loved it um my favorite short story of this was uh, shinchao shinchao <laughs> that one ruined me uh, deeply so yeah that is um my number 3 in terms of like rankings if we are really going to look at it but yeah well number 2 in terms of rankings if we're really doing this is going to have to be if bill street could talk by james baldwin this book again is super short and just blew me away 
in terms of just all of the things that I felt while reading this. This again comprises of a lot of things. Essentially, the story is about Tish and Fawny, who are two people who are young, um, living in Harlem in like the 1970s, 80s. I'm not really sure. I don't, I don't quite, yeah, 70s. Um, and they are in love. Um, and Tish is realizes that she's pregnant. However, Fawny is in jail for a crime that he did not commit. So um, we are following them and this journey that they are going through right now with Fawny in jail, as well as also getting to know them and how like they became friends, how they became lovers, how they fell in love and all of that sort of stuff and meeting their family and just how everyone is dealing with it. Um, and it is just beautiful and stunning. And the writing of James Baldwin is just so amazing. The characterizations are stunning. Um, I absolutely fell in love. My camera battery is blinking at me because apparently I do not know how to charge camera batteries so I'm just gonna move on to my absolute favorite which is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell this book was stunning in terms of writing absolutely brilliant um, I love the characters um, I'm gonna ask you to google what it's about but essentially it talks about Shakespeare but Shakespeare is not really mentioned in this um, essentially we are following his family um, and of his son um, called Hamnet um, who died um, because of various reasons and we're seeing what happened um to him um and what happens afterwards we are following uh his love story with agnes his mother um there's a lot of magical elements but just absolutely stunning in terms of writing um the only it's it's very fictionalized because the only things that we know for sure that happened is that shakespeare had a son who died um who was married he was also married to agnes um and he lived in stratford upon avon those are the only things that we sort of know and then Maggie O'Farrell sort of created this fictionalized like life for all of these people um, but I thought it was absolutely like stunning and amazing and absolutely brilliant um, so I am going to be talking about this in a future video but yes that's all that I have for now um, those were the books that I absolutely loved these were the stats for the quarter so far um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you are doing well. I am going to go before um, my battery dies. But do subscribe if you feel like you want to. Because like great content and all of that sort of stuff. I promise to be more like on time. But that's all. I will see you in my next video. Bye.